thanks, Sister Hillary, for and all those who have participated so far. And I want to really send a special thank you and publicly to Brother Siddiqui from the Elizabeth Church. Last Sabbath when I preached there, the Lord had me to preach there for a reason. As I told you, we were having problems with the music on the platform. And I somehow couldn't connect the dots to fix it and I was seeking answers and on Sabbath afternoon I asked him after service and he didn't know and he said we'll research and Sunday we connected on the platform <clears throat> and we were able to solve the problem. So thank the Lord for that because the music was really hurting our ministry here in terms of uh, the platform, not just here but all over <laughs> in the South as well. Couldn't seem to get it just right for any of the prayer meetings that we conduct down there. But now we thank the Lord that it worked on Tuesday evening when we were on the platform for prayer meeting, everything came through crystal clear. So we thank the Lord for that. And so this evening we want to talk about the hurt of sin. The hurt of sin. Now, our scripture reading is from Genesis 1 through 20, chapter 3, 1 through 24, but our focus verse is verse 3 of chapter 3 of Genesis. Genesis 3, 7. So, the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Wow. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together. Fig leaves? And made themselves aprons. Oh my. We need to read this again. The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity again to proclaim your word. Help me now to speak truth to power, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the hurt of sin. The fact of sin, brethren, may be laughed at, but it can never, it can never be ignored. In every area of life, the effects of sin are revealed. As John R. W. Scott wrote, sin is not a convenient in Invention of pastors to keep them in their jobs in the pulpit. It is a universal fact. The Bible is crystal clear about this truth. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, All, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. John declared in 1 John 1, 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You see, brethren, the experiences of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden are divine revelations of the hurt of sin. They discover the painful truth that a person cannot transgress a command of God. They cannot deny God's right to command or fail to attain God's standard without feeling the results of the choice. Sin as consequences. Sin as effects. The, 70, <clears throat> the severity of sin's hurt depends, brethren, on many factors. But no one no one can escape it. Scripture says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And so for this evening's Vespers message, we're going to cover three points and three points only. And the first point is sin hurts because it brings separation. Sin hurts because it brings separation. Point number two, sin hurts because it brings suffering. Sin hurts because it brings suffering. And point number three, sin hurts because it brings death. Yes, 
Sin hurts because it brings debts. Sin separates humans from God. That is crystal clear. You see, Satan, brethren, promised Adam and Eve that they would be as gods, knowing good and evil if they would only disobey God's commands. But Satan failed to tell them, brethren, that their disobedience would cause them to be separated from God, whom they knew and talked with every day. And many times, if we would think twice before we act or speak, we would check ourselves. So never again would their lives be the same. As Adam and Eve were separated from all of God's fellowship and blessings, our sin brethren brings the same results. Our sin results in the same thing. It brings the same consequences. It has the same effects. W. G. Connor wrote, this is the most serious thing about sin. All the woe of sin grows out of the fact that it cuts man from, off from God. From whom all blessings flow. Sin, brethren, separates people from one another. Sin separates persons from person. That's what sin does. Sin is insidious. It breeds contempt. It breeds pain. It brings suffering. It brings agony. It brings death in the end. This painful reality became personal for Adam and Eve, when Cain killed his brother Abel. Since that time, brethren, people have been against each other. Why? Because of the ugly effects of sin. Now, this should not come as a surprise to us, for the Apostle Paul wrote years ago concerning the works of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5, listen to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, yes, drunkenness, revi revilings, and such like. Can the scripture be any clearer than that? You see, as long as people sin, there will be some type of separation among people and the hurt of sin will be felt. And that leads me to point number two, brethren. Sin hurts because it brings suffering. Let's be clear. We know from the experience of Adam and Eve uh, that much of human suffering is directly related to human sin. Both the person who sins and others suffer because of the sins committed. We see suffering as shame. Sin brings shame. The fact that Adam and Eve tried to hide themselves from God's presence, brethren, it's a graphic demonstration of their sense of shame. Years later, Ezra expressed his shame for sin with these words in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 6. Oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespasses is grown up into the heavens. Suffering 
brings guilt. Suffering as guilt, imagine. You see, for the rest of their lives, Adam and Eve, brethren, lived with the sense of guilt that became theirs because they had sinned. Since that time, all of humankind has suffered the pains of guilt due to S-I-N, sin. Many cry like David in Psalm chapter 38 and verse 4, My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Sin brings pain. Suffering brings pain. Adam and Eve did suffer some physical pain because of their sin, but perhaps, brethren, their greatest pain was mental because they soon realized that their sin, while giving them the knowledge of good and evil, had robbed them of life. Sin robbed them of life. The devil did not tell them what the consequences would be. He just told them, you're going to be like God. You're going to know good from evil. But they didn't realize. You see, it's not hard to see the physical pain suffered by many because of their sin. But we have no way to measure, brethren, effectively the mental pain suffered because of it. Sometimes our activities as persons affect other people in our lives. Sometimes we have practices, we have bad habits, and sometimes it hurts the people that means the most in our lives, our spouses, our children, our parents. Anytime we engage in these practices, and most of all, it hurts God. Again, this is the result of sin. In this light, we should remember Paul's words in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can't sow sin and get grace and mercy. It doesn't work that way. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation to them which walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And that leads us to our third and final point. Brethren, sin hurts because it brings debts. I'll say it again. Sin hurts because it brings debts. In Genesis chapter 2 and 17, God said to Adam and Eve, You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. God didn't mince his words. He made it crystal clear. He told them what the consequences were. Sin brings physical debts. Although it would be foolish uh, to, to claim that every physical debt is caused by some particular act of sin, it is likewise, brethren, foolish to overlook the fact that physical debt is a part of the human experience. Had Adam and Eve not sinned, there would have been no debt. God did not create man to die. God created man to live in an eternal fellowship with him. Debt is foreign to God. Sin brings debt. It brings debt. As a result of Adam and Eve's sin, Paul said in accordance with Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Paul said in the course of Romans 5 and verse 12, Death passed upon all men. Death passed upon all men. You see, brethren, this is not good. Spiritual debt is the chief penalty of sin. Yes, spiritual debt is the chief penalty of sin. And sometimes you can see that in the churches. When persons behave in 
certain ways, you know that they are spiritually dead. There is no spiritual life in them. There is no Jesus in them. They are just the devil walking around, an agent of the devil, a disciple of the devil. It means that because of sin, every person by nature is destined to a final and complete separation from God. Because of sin. This is not a pleasant prospect, brethren. But sin is not pleasant. Sin hurts. Sin brings shame. Sin, sin brings embarrassment. Oh, when you see in the news the life of someone who you thought would have known better and do wrong, how destructive it can be. How it hurts. Hurts not only the families, but it hurts the people who are close to that person. And you see, that's how the devil plays. The devil plays for keeps. We cannot play with him. We cannot romance with him. Because his desire is to destroy your faith. His desire is to destroy your hope. His desire is to destroy your prospect of going to heaven. We must say no to the devil. Like Jesus, we must say, get in, Satan. Get in. And so in conclusion, brethren, only as people accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior do they overcome the hurt of sin. When I say accept, I mean to accept and to live. In other words, our conviction must match our profession. Our conviction must match our action every single day. Always, we must surrender to the Lordship of Christ. We must give him the reins. We must give him the control. Let him take charge. Let him reign supreme in our lives. And when he reigns supreme in our lives, the devil has no opportunity. The devil has no chance because he'll recognize he has to find somewhere else to go. Don't open the door for him. Why? Because sin will make you stay longer than you want to. Sin will make you spin more than you want to. And in the end, you'll be empty, busted, and broke, both spiritually and physically. And if you are not careful, all you'll get is a hole in the ground, six foot six. That's what sin does. Sin damages. Sin destroys. The Bible says, for the enemy come but for to kill and to destroy. Nothing more. So, we cannot. We cannot have God and the devil. We cannot serve God and the devil at the same time. Sin and Jesus cannot coexist together. When Jesus comes in, sin must go. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come to these sacred hours of the Sabbath, let us reconsecrate our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us reconsecrate ourselves to following his word more carefully so that we will be on the straight and narrow path and that we will never live our lives, not for one moment, not for one second, in jeopardy of his kingdom, should we be called upon to lay down the burdens of this life. Father in heaven, all the hurts of sin, the pages of history are filled with it. Our world at present is filled with it. Help us to love you and serve you only and worship you only worship you as our creator let us be deliberate let us be intentional let us give you our full allegiance in worship in praise in honor in exaltation and adoration until that glad day 
when we shall see thee coming in the clouds of glory, and we might hear the commendation, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, thou have been faithful of a few things, enter into the joys of my Lord. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen.